Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, October 9th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today is Patch Tuesday, so definitely are going to start with Microsoft patches. Microsoft released patches for 117 vulnerabilities. In addition, there are three vulnerabilities that apply to Chromium and with that to Edge. Three of these vulnerabilities are rated as critical, which again is a fairly small number compared to past patch Tuesdays. Five of the vulnerabilities were disclosed before today, and two out of those five vulnerabilities were not only disclosed, but also have been exploited. So let's take a look at some of the notable vulnerabilities we have here. One is... uh, remote code execution vulnerability in the Microsoft Management Console. In order to exploit this, an attacker needs to convince a user to open an MSC file in Microsoft Management Console, and that leads then to code execution. Apparently, this has already been exploited. On the other hand, it sounds a little bit more difficult exploit to pull off. We also, among the already exploited vulnerabilities, have a vulnerability yet again in MSHTML. And, well, this is yet another platform spoofing vulnerability. I believe this is the fourth zero day in this component. This is sort of that leftover from Internet Explorer that is still used in Windows even after Internet Explorer has been removed. There are sort of two more noteworthy vulnerability. There is a vulnerability in curl. Curl, the little uh, web agent. It's labeled as a remote code execution vulnerability. Actual lib curl advisory from July states that it's most likely just going to crash curl and that remote code execution can't be excluded, uh, but is unlikely. In order to exploit this vulnerability, the victim has to use curl to connect to a TLS server that then delivers a crafted TLS message. Next already published vulnerability is a security feature bypass vulnerability in Windows Hyper-V. It bypasses UEFI and then essentially can compromise the hypervisors and the secure kernel. If this actually is being exploited, it's of course a severe issue. However, exploitation, again, is tricky, requires that the system is being rebooted as the exploitation happens. So again, nothing to be too worried about, but definitely a patch that you want to address. And the final already disclosed vulnerability is approach escalation vulnerability in win logon. Among the critical vulnerabilities, we do have a remote code execution vulnerability in the remote desktop protocol server. Uh, Things like this have been exploited in the past, so it's certainly something uh, to keep a little bit an eye out for. Uh, Next, uh, more Microsoft Configuration Manager remote code execution vulnerabilities. And uh, then we also, I think that's Well, it sort of interests me personally a little bit, uh, but still I think one of the lesser uh, of concern vulnerabilities here, even though it's critical. A Visual Studio code extension for Arduino remote code execution vulnerability. Yes, it's a remote code execution vulnerability, but you actually have to have the Arduino extension running. That's just the highlights, but I said lots of vulnerabilities being addressed here, so definitely apply this patch. Uh, There are a number of of somewhat concerning issues here. For example, in the Windows Mobile broadband driver, there are denial of service and remote code execution vulnerabilities. There are a number of different remote code execution vulnerabilities in the Windows routing and remote access service. These are some of the things that are a little bit uh, harder to sort of judge, you know, how much they matter to you. Depends, of course, on whether or not you're using these components. So definitely apply these patches. Adobe also released updates for nine of its products. Uh, The one that sort of sticks out here a little bit is Adobe Commerce. Six of these vulnerabilities are rated critical, including arbitrary code execution vulnerabilities via cross-site scripting, which is kind of interesting. 
Now, this Patch Tuesday podcast, I always kind of follow patches, so I figured I want to uh, mention one other story that initially doesn't really look like a tech story, but I think it probably could use a little bit more exposure. And uh, it's actually sort of more a political issue initially. The British government has given up sovereignty of a small tropical island uh, in the Indian Ocean. It's known as the Kagos Islands, if I pronounce this correctly. What will happen is that Mauritius, which will now, after a decade-long diplomatic battle, gain sovereignty of these islands. The reason this matters is the Kagos Islands own the .io domain, with the country essentially ceasing to exist. The .io domain will be retired. There will be initially no additional new domain names being allowed in that country-level, top-level domain.io, and existing domains will slowly be phased out. The exact process, I'll link uh, to an article that has a little bit more detail here, but I think we'll see what will happen there. But there are a bunch of sort of tech-related domains that are using the .io top-level domain that essentially now have to rebrand. And this as often, whenever we have confusion like this, of course, may be a point for attackers to take advantage of. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.